In lesson 2.3, we're going to be looking at optical systems. So applying the tools and the equations we learned in the last lesson, 2.2, to popular optical systems that we, not, if not all of us use, most of us have used at some point. Starting with the physics of the human eye. So the human eye is a rather amazing piece of uh, biological engineering. Uh, through natural selection, we have come to this rather complicated uh, system where you have sent, uh, basically a clear opening in your face, allowing light into your eye, where it focuses through the optical system into an image on your retina at the back of your eye. So light first goes through the cornea, from air to the cornea, which does about two thirds or so, 60, 60, 70% of the vision correction of the focusing is done by this cornea. Then through this, what's called the aqueous humor behind the cornea, it reaches the lens of your eye, which does the remaining focusing, which takes some image and focuses it down onto the back of your eye where the light sensitive cells are, the rods and the cones, which we'll talk about in a few videos, where the rods and the cones sit on your retina. That information is taken via the optic nerve to your brain and allowing you to see vision. Now, your brain is an amazing comp computer that puts together vision from two separate eyes for, the, for most people creating a 3D vision, although there are many medical issues where the eyes and brain connection don't work. Um, some of you might be vision impaired listening to these lectures rather than watching me talk about these lectures. Um, some of you might be colorblind. About 10% of all men are blue-green colorblind. A smaller fraction of both men and women are completely colorblind. There are other vision issues. Um, there are some people who can't see 3D and so on, or stereoscopic vision. So we're going to look at just a regular, healthy, normal human eye and how it ideally should function. So light comes in through the cornea. Now the cornea cannot be changed in size or thickness unless you're doing it medically. So you, you have no ability to reshape your cornea. But what you can do is reshape your lens. There are little tiny fibers on the lens, and the lens is a flexible structure, so it's kind of almost like a water balloon, where you can stretch it and compress it, some small amount. Not quite as flexible as a water balloon, but you get the idea. By flexing and stretching the lens, you can change the range of focal lengths of this eye system. So the eye doesn't have one specific focal fixed focal length. It can change. Because if you think about it, the object distances of objects you're looking at change. And the distance from the lens to the back of your eyeball doesn't. Right? That's an image distance. That stays fixed. Your eyes don't flex. So if you have a fixed image distance, but different object distances, the only way you can focus in those different object distances is by changing the focal length of the system. And that's what this lens and the muscles around this lens of cilia do. The process of adjusting the eye's focal length is called accommodation. So your eye basically goes through accommodation, changing shape and size to change the focal length of your eye system. Now this doesn't always work. Ideally, the focal range for the human eye, you can focus easily on things as close as 25 centimeters from your face. This is about, divided by two point, this is about 10 centimeters, sorry, 10 inches or so from your face. Um, you can easily focus in on out to infinity. That's the ideal range of the human eye. Things closer than 10 centimeters, it's hard to focus. This 25 centimeters is called the near point of your vision. As you get older, the flexibility of the lens diminishes and your near point gets further and further away, which is why you see people who might have perfect 20-20 vision at a distance, elderly people, might have perfect 20-20 vision at a distance, but have to use reading glasses to help focus on close objects. So as you get older, this near point starts to get bigger and bigger. Now, Again, the human eye is just an amazing structure, a lot of complexity going into it. Um, the area behind the optic nerve actually has no light sensitive cells. 
So each of us has a blind spot in each eye that your brain just sort of glosses over and pretends isn't there. So there's a lot of post-processing that goes on in your brain from your vision. Your vision, if you can actually see what your eye sees, a lot of blood vessels get in the way of the vision. Um, you have little floaters in your eyes, which you might have seen on occasion in the vitreous humor, little hard spots in the vitreous humor that can come and go, creates these little, uh, what are called floaters in your vision, little dark spots that float around. Um, the optic nerve itself, uh, you know, creates a blind spot in each eye. So the brain does a lot of post-processing to the vision that you get from the eyeball. And we can use this knowledge of post-processing to actually trick the eye. So if you've ever seen optical illusions, right? L illusions where you have a printed uh, on a sheet of paper, and I'll link to some optical illusions um, at the uh, uh, online. Uh, we can talk about some of our favorite optical illusions. But optical illusions where on a printed sheet of paper, when you stare at it, it looks like the ink is moving, but it's not. Or two colors of gray that look like they're different shades of gray, but aren't. So we can trick our brain, because our brain does so much post-processing of our vision, we can tr we, if we know, have knowledge of how the brain works, we can trick the brain into seeing things uh, that it doesn't see. So this is the human eye. And we're going to talk about some problems with the human eye, the most common types of problems, nearsightedness, farsightedness, how to correct nearsightedness and farsightedness, astigmatism, um, and other issues with the human eye, how the human eye sees color, and so on. 